Podcast. Mike's Daily Podcast. Mike's Daily Podcast. Mike's Daily Podcast. Episode 1260. 1260. 1260. Wow. Beautiful, isn't it? That number. My name is Mike Matthews. Welcome to Mike's Daily Podcast here at Cafe Anyway, located somewhere in Podcastro Valley, the last place on earth. Today, the disgruntled fiddle player, Benita, the brewmaster, Joy and Regis Philbin. Mike's Daily Podcast. Oh, wait, Joy and Regis Philbin canceled? Thank God. And we'll get to this segment called Mike's Daily Podcast. Ain't life grand. Well, I had this thing happen to me where I looked at my little Christmas tree and said, wow, it's January 16th. I better get that bitch put away. And that's what I did. I didn't mean to say the female dog word, but I meant it in a sort of fun way. Mike's Daily Podcast. I mean, it's derogatory. I mean, I'm sorry. No apologies. Mike's. That's a great song. Daily. That was done by Podcast. Nirvana. Yeah. Uh, what more can I say? Oh, that's all apologies. Well, and it's too late to apologize. It's too late. That would be the band known as really wonderful counting stars is what it's called that band one republic one nation one something like that what i wanted to say was i finally got around to putting the ornaments away ornaments are very dear and near and smear to you aren't they because you 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 know there's some story behind every ornament isn't there I've got this one of Santa Claus sitting in an inner tube. I like to put that one up on my tree. That's from my mom. She gave that to me shortly after I got married. She sent me a bunch of ornaments. She said, this is for the new tree that you're going to have with your new wife. Now I'm divorced. I still put the tree, uh, the ornament on. Actually, my tree now, I don't buy a new tree. I cannot understand why people buy Christmas trees. You've got to be kidding me. The next time you feel like buying a Christmas tree, let's say, oh, in about 12 months, just remember, oh, look, we just walked in. Just remember when you walked outside your door on December 26th, and saw all the Christmas trees lined up along the sidewalk, along the street. Actually, it was probably more like January 1st, January 2nd. The, all these trees that you paid 60, 70, I paid $60 for a Christmas tree once. A live Christmas tree. Oh, but you get the smell of the, no, I didn't. I didn't get a Christmas tree smell. All I got was the fun experience of buying a Christmas tree from a guy who had gloves that had the little fingertips showing. Because he wanted to be all Charles Dickensy. I just buy a fake tree, pull it out every year. You know what? The fake tree that I have, I bought on a whim. Back, I posted pictures of that trip that I took to Alabama's coast. Alabama has a little bit of coast and along the Gulf Coast. They call it Gulf Shores. Look while she's walking. And it's it's a nice little area, and I my. Then wife and my mom and I met, my mom came up from Florida. We met there in, in Gulf Shores uh, and we used a, what's that, rent, uh, rent by owner RBO site and rented this cool little condo. It was very nice inside and condos! <laughs> Wonderful things to lose your money on and we, so my mom came up from Florida. We came down from Huntsville, Alabama, met there. And I'm like, we need a Christmas tree. But I didn't really, I know I didn't say that. We just happened to, my ex-wife used to love to shop at Target. She loved Target. I think after we got divorced, she stopped going. But we would go to any Target that we saw. So she saw the Gulf Shores Target and we had to go inside and we're walking around and since it's Christmas Day it might have been Christmas Eve they've got all their Christmas stuff half price and I see this little Christmas tree probably about five feet high four feet somewhere around there 
tiny Christmas tree with lights, comes with lights, in a little box, and it's like 10 bucks, and I'm like, I'll buy that. And so I, I bought that, and we, we put it in the little condo, and that was our little Christmas tree in the condo. And, and we celebrated Christmas, and my mom was there. We played dominoes. It was fun. One of the warmest memories I have on a very cold night in Gulf Shores. And I still have that tree, and that's the tree that comes out every year, and that's the tree I put away yesterday. The end. Hey, so today I have to train this guy. We got a new guy that's starting at work. And nice guy. He asks too many freaking questions. <laughs> Which is what you need to do when you're training. You need to ask a bunch of questions, right? Because you got to figure out what this is, this is, and this is. But sometimes I hear the question and I go, w uh, huh? Did, did you just ask that? Because sometimes the questions are a little bit superfluous. But you know what? I don't think there's any superfluous questions. Only stupid answers. So some people walked in. Hi, Mark. It's Benita the Rodeo Queen. Hi. It's a disgruntled fiddle player, tell you what. What? I'm counting it down, Mike. 12 noon, Friday, no more Obama. It's going to be Trump time. Trump. Yeah, but you didn't want Trump to win. You wanted uh, Michelle Bachman. And here's today's podcast picture. Bachman Santorum Overdrive. Yeah, well, that didn't happen, thankfully. But Trump did to get ready, my Trump train, Trump train, Trump train. Blah, blah, blah. All right. And Toby Keith. Yeah, he's okay. So that's happening 12 noon. Wow. And the podcast picture, wow, is of a wonderful sunset that I saw. This was just on Friday. I said, I'm taking Basil the Boxer. <laughs> And going down to Jack London Square, and I'm going to walk around. And you know what? There's a bunch of dogs at Jack London Square. We met this... Oh, I should post a picture of this guy. What's his name? His name is Murray. This huge English Mastiff. And I can't even tell you how huge this dog is. Over 200 pounds. He weighed as much as me. And this dog was beautiful. And just... Basil actually barked at him. And, and I said... And the owner was really cool. And... We said, let's try that again. And then Basil was cool and then sniffed the dog, Murray. And I just hung out and talked to this guy. And this guy basically lives with Murray. Like they, everywhere he goes, he takes Murray with him. And this dog has the big droopy jowls and the just beautiful face. I'll post a picture of him sometime. But today, the sunset of Alameda, uh, at the harbor, Jack London Square. I'm doing kind of an Alameda thing. Yesterday was Harbor Bay Isle, which is right next to Alameda, Bay Farm Island. So that's what the podcast picture is. And who else walked in? Hello, Mike. I make the root beer. I'm the brewmaster. Oh, boy. I have some delicious root beer. No, thank you. I'm all about the smoothies lately. You mean the ones that make you choke and die? Yeah, okay. The smoothies do make me choke. I, d I did have a smoothie yesterday that made me choke and the uh John Deere the engineer Go! Mac dude, enjoy delicious fruit beer to wash it down to wash my smoothie down yeah Joey and Reed just filming like it. they like it okay and finally if you'd like to see past podcast pictures go to mikesdailypodcast.com You'll see the podcast pictures. You'll see the past interviews I've done. You can help out the show if you're going to buy anything on Amazon. Go through that link at mikesdailypodcast.com. Buy whatever it is you're going to buy, and that helps us out. It's wonderful if you do that. And there's the PayPal. You can become an inglorious Mike's Daily Podcaster. If you do that, you'll get a special greeting from all the Cafe Anyway characters. And you can call the show. Why haven't you called the show yet? Call us at Cafe Anyway. It's simple. It's 336 MM Daily. MM for me, Mike Matthews. 336 MM Daily, because I come to you daily. Now, let's get to the segment Ain't Life Grand. Ain't Life Grand. 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 Okay, so the most unpopular president ever to be elected. Uh, has he has the lowest approval ratings of all time of any president ever elected? That's what I keep hearing anyway. Oh, but that's from the media, Mike. The media lies. 
The media is horrible. Don't trust everybody's mad at the media. Friends, you're going to love the media soon because you're going to start to realize, wait, Trump is lying to me. That's what I'm saying to you, Trump supporters. Trump is lying to me. But it's funny because, you know, my mom's my mom's a big Trump supporter. And every time she says something like, well, the Clintons have the Clinton Foundation. I'm like, mom, Trump Foundation. Well, Bill Clinton, he was whoring around. Uh, Trump was whoring around. Weird bit. It's like tit for tat. Hey, what's a tat and where can I exchange it for that other thing? Old joke. Where's my Trumps for that thing? The roster, and that's not even mine, so I really don't even deserve that rim shot. The roster of House Democrats planning to boycott President-elect Donald Trump's inauguration happening at noon on Friday grew to about 50 yesterday in a protest of the New York businessman's policies and his repeated criticism of legendary civil rights activist John Lewis, which we talked about last show. The Georgia congressman made headlines over the weekend for challenging Trump's legitimacy to be the next president and erroneously claiming that Trump's inauguration would be the first he will have missed since coming to Congress three decades ago. In fact, Lewis had skipped President George W. Bush's inauguration in 2001. Trump struck on Tuesday morning, as is typical, on Twitter, saying, wrong... Wait a minute. I might have a recording of that. Wrong. Wrong. Trump tweeted, citing a 2001 Washington Post reported that noted Lewis had skipped George W. Bush's inauguration. Lewis's office on Tuesday confirmed that the congressman had missed Bush's swearing in. This according to the Associated Press. Spokeswoman Brenda Jones said of John Lewis his absence at the time was also a form of dissent he did not believe the outcome of that election including the controversies around the results in Florida and the unprecedented intervention of the US Supreme Court reflected a free fair and open democratic process you remember that election oh wait you weren't alive you grew up during Obama yeah well we had a Republican for eight years like we're gonna have now I, like I said last show, I think he's going to be here for eight years. And then I think Pence is going to be president. I just, this is the feeling I get. Because I don't know what the hell is going on in Pennsylvania, Ohio, and Iowa. Wisconsin. Those people, what is happening in those states? I got to go. I'm going to take a microphone and go to those states and find out. I'm going to do some investigative reporting. Because I'm the media. Now, I'll just sit here and read this article. And so, Lewis said last week that he would skip Trump swearing in on Friday, telling NBC News that he didn't view Trump as a legitimate president. I think the Russians participated in helping this man get elected, and they helped destroy the candidacy of Hillary Clinton, he said in an interview with NBC's Meet the Press that aired Sunday. You know, isn't it interesting how all before the election, we were saying, this election could be like 2000, this election could be like 2000, Clinton, I mean, Gore versus uh, Bush. And it sure was. Bush got the electoral college, but Gore won the uh, the popular vote. Lewis's comments drew angry weekend tweets from Trump who wrote that rather than falsely complaining about the election results, Lewis should focus on his congressional district. He said, like, it's all messed up over there. That's my Trump impression. I think that's the best Trump impression ever. Wrong. Oh. House Speaker Paul Ryan also weighed in, telling a Milwaukee Fox television affiliate, which I worked for a Milwaukee Fox television affiliate Tuesday. Did you know that, Trump? Wrong. Yeah, that is wrong. I never, never been to Wisconsin. I gotta go someday. I can't wait. I can't wait. No, seriously, I can't wait. I hear there are a lot of Germans there, and bratwurst. Mm. Uh, Paul Ryan said that Trump won his election fair and square, and that Democrats were wrong to try to. They were what? Wrong. To try to inject some kind of claim of illegitimacy on the dawn of a new presidency. Ryan praised Lewis, however, telling Fox 6 now that Lewis, quote, knows that what I think of him, how much I look up to him, I think both men would do better by just getting to know each other and understanding each other. Well said, Paul. You know, that was said to a Fox affiliate, and we have a Fox affiliate in that, that is filmed right there where I took that picture, today's podcast picture. 
uh, in, near Jack London Square. And in the morning, they they have the windows, and the anchors sit in front of the window, and you see the beautiful harbor behind them. And one of them is Gassia Michaelian, and she's so beautiful, and I have such a crush on her. And then she does this thing where she goes live on Facebook every morning when she does the TV show, and she and she looks at the. At, at the little Facebook live camera and goes, okay, wait, I got to go on the air. And then she goes on the air and does her TV thing and you can watch both simultaneously. And it's quite exciting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh, yeah. It's probably not how you say your name. Actually, I've only watched her show with the sound off. I know it's creepy. It's also love. So that is what love is. The number of Democrats boycotting Trump's inauguration continued to increase, including a Minnesota representative, Keith Ellison, who's top contender to lead the Democratic National Committee, as well as many black and Hispanic lawmakers, House Minority Leader, Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer of New York. Will it? Oh, wait, what? Oh, so Pelosi and Schumer are going to be there. Oh, but none of the Senate Democrats said they'll skip the inaugural. Wait, what? Wait, what? This sentence is weird. Oh, okay. So the Senate Democrats are all going to be there. And Pelosi will be there from the House. And Schumer will be there. Got it. Okay. Uh, Sean Spicer, Trump's spokesperson, and he has the coolest name ever, Sean Spicer. Sean Spicer in the mornings on Fox Affiliate Minnesota. Shrugged off the protest and indicated that they would give away the seats. We'd love for every member of Congress to attend, but if they don't, we've got some great seats for others to partake in. It's a shame that these folks don't want to be part of the peaceful transfer of power. As we go outside a cafe anyway, we're doing Mike's daily podcast somewhere in Podcaster Valley. I had, uh, I, I wrote to Gassia on Facebook. I sent her a message. I said, hey, I see you spent some time in Huntsville. I did as well. Oh, hey, speaking of, <laughs> she never responded. Speaking of emails. Oh my God. Email for me now, and you are calm and not so calm. Mess. I had somebody uh, write on that roller skating picture that I had on Facebook. Uh, he said, "My friend Carlos said I attended a bunch of disco roller skate parties as a kid. Could barely keep my butt off the rink's floor. But every now and then, if there's only a few people in near proximity, and I got rolling on a straightaway, watch out, John Travolta. My disco was awesome. And as I mentioned, also Kai Alfred Hillig, the singer-songwriter that you should check out from Seattle, Washington. He also said." He liked to roller skate. You know, roller skating is great. And you know, Carlos, there is a thing called a shift key. And you can capitalize the word I and the beginning of sentences. What is the deal with the people obsessed with their cap lock button? Cap lock. I'm going to do caps lock and just write and look like I'm yelling. Or I'm never going to hit the shift key or the capital lock key or caps. At all, I'm just gonna undercase everything, lowercase everything. Do you know the wonderful Keith Urban, Australian guy, who I interviewed once, and you can hear it in the cubbyhole section of mikesdailypodcast.com, the cassette cubbyhole, because I saved the interview on cassette. And that is Keith Urban, when he first started, he pr- always had his name spelt out in lower caps. And he said, oh, it's the way of the internet. And he was right. Next show, we are going to have the wonderful Madame Rutabaga, Valentino, and Bison Bentley. Keith Urban, an Australian country singer. He knew the future. Who knew? Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.